Today we're going to be breaking down a bunch of altcoins for you guys, right. give you a full run into could this be and setting up for a bull run, and what is it going to look like? Well, uh, I think you're going to like it. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Uh, I do want to have our uh, co-host jumping in today and our uh, guest trader. You guys have seen him before, and that, of course, is Mr. Tim Warren from Investing Bros. If you guys have not checked out, how are you, by the way, Tim? Everything Doing good? great. Doing great. Yeah. Great to be back on here. Hey, listen, if you guys haven't checked out uh, Tim's channel over on YouTube, make sure and check it out, Investing Bros with a Z, if you're listening over on the podcast side. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you guys are listening on the podcast side, what we're about to do is really dive into charts. Uh, we'll be breaking down a whole slew of tokens for you. So take a time, jump over here to the YouTube channel and subscribe right now, because that'll help you at least kind of get the visual effect of what's happening. But hey, I understand if you're driving right now and you can't do that, We'll still walk you through this. Tim, let's get into a few things. I want to go over to Bitcoin real quick. Uh, price is slipping a little bit. USPPI, jobless claims uh, surprised a few people. I want to zoom in on a couple of topics here. Get your opinion on this. August print, uh, this is the U.S. price producer price index, showed a month-on-month -month increase slightly beyond expectations, uh, while year-on-year -year equivalent was lower than anticipated. So, that in itself is probably going to have some more effect around jobs, which is one of the things that many people have been saying could be the spoiler of all of this uh, as we continue to go in. And when you look at the uh, Fed rate, are you are you targeting a, a 25 or are you, are you kind of going with some of these people who are picking out 50 as a, a potential cut? No, I, I've been saying to our audience for a while, we want 25. Yeah. Uh, 25 basis points is a nice, modest cut that communicates that we're probably going to have a soft landing, that inflation's under control, that uh, jobs are not out of control. Even, even if reality is people are losing the jobs, I don't know about you, Paul, I, I know lots of people personally who have lost their jobs in the last couple of months. I know mm -hmm. what it's like to go to the grocery store and to see the prices of food compared to a couple of years ago. So I tell people all the time, you live in a world of reality that says inflation yeah. is still a problem and that jobs are scary right now. But in the data world, which is what Jerome Powell and the Fed and a lot of the large investors care about, they're showing the signs of a soft landing and a, and 25 basis point cut that would look a lot like what we saw in 2020 and 2016 there's a yeah. there's a fear out there that pivots bring crashes to the stock market mm -hmm. well that's not true pivots that come in fear based on recession is either here or it's coming where they go heavier, like 50 basis points, those are the ones that crash markets. 25 basis point cuts are actually traditionally extremely bullish. So we've been telling people, you should be rooting for only 25. We don't yeah. want to go to 50. 50 communicates fear and concern. Yeah, and definitely something is broke. If you look at the chart right now on Bitcoin, and of course we saw it uh, getting and nearing uh, almost 50K last week, it rebounded a little bit. We saw a little bit of move mm -hmm. yesterday after the uh, debate. Uh, what does Bitcoin look like to you right now going into the end of September? Yeah, so here, I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, so people can see what I'm looking at here. We, we're not out of the woods by any means yet. It's it's obviously very good to see us back up above 58,000 at the moment. Uh, and I'm going to show everybody some reasons to be optimistic about the future. But until we get back above this purple line I have drawn right here, uh, and for anyone who's listening and doesn't see this, it's at $65,000. That was the high we had back on August 25th. And for the last couple of months, as we actually predicted on the Investing Bros channel, after hitting a new high back in March, I told our audience, do not be surprised as we go into the halving event to see several months of boring sideways and potentially downward price action for Bitcoin. And we won't really see a rebound till the end of August or September. Well, it turns out I was a little early with the end of August, but it looks like September could be good. But you can see here, when you look at the highs, anyone who's watching the YouTube channel, the highs keep getting lower and lower and lower. And the lows, every time we dip down, they've gotten lower and lower. Even when you come to this most recent drop, while we didn't match the wick from way back here on August 5th, we closed a daily candle body uh, lower than we have done so since all the way back in February of 2024. So this this is a bear trend. When you set lower highs, lower lows, you're in a bear trend. What you have to do to break that trend is 
set a new brand new high. And that level we're watching is $65,000. It's where my purple line is here on the chart. But the reasons why I'm really excited about what we potentially have is because of what I'm seeing on the oscillators out on the daily chart. Our RSI is looking like it's about to cross the 50. And traditionally, uh, the 50 line is a big telling point on whether the bulls or the bears are in control. If the bears stay in control, we'll reject on this 50 line and head back down. But if we're able to break above it and sustain that movement, while well, we had a little fake out back here in August, that should bring us more bullish momentum to at least start to ri uh, rival the $65,000 mark. Our MACD line just crossed bullish where this blue line crossed above the average trend on the orange. Our histograms are turning green again. That's very, very bullish. But the thing that's best is a couple of days ago, the Investing Bros community, we bought around $54,000 because this is the Lux Algo oscillator that has my favorite buying signal bar none. This green reversal triangle down here, a green momentum dot as the oscillators move to the upside, and then this red cloud. It's the money flow. That money flow turned positive back here on uh, September 24th. That was our buy signal that we should make a move to the upside. And traditionally, uh, in fact, if you were to look at the last 10 times it's happened, only one time do we get a buy signal like this and we don't at least make it up to what is called the smart trail. This is a signal on uh, Lux Algo, but it's this red cloud right here that people are watching on YouTube. If you can't see it, it's a cloud that goes between 61,000 and 63,000. I kind of have my mark somewhere there in the middle around 62. But nine out of the last 10 times we've seen this specific buy signal on the oscillator, we have at least made it back up to the smart trail, if not above. So I'm in a short term long, the bros community is in a short term long on Bitcoin right now up to about $62,000. After that, it's about reevaluating. Do we have the momentum to keep on going? That's a question we're asking. But on the lower time frame, this is the last thing I'm going to say here and we'll move on because I know we have a lot that we want to discuss. There is hope. Uh, for a bigger move. We actually predicted on our channel the other day a pullback back down to 55,700 and then a rally. Well, the reason for this was A, there was liquidity down at that level that traders like to manipulate price to go back down to. But you'll also notice that if you come back here and look at some price action, there was a dip in price, a very small dip back early in September. And that is going to be what we call a left shoulder. I'll explain why that is. Then there was a much larger dip that happened on September 6th that created what we were going to call the head. And this most recent dip back down has made what we call a right shoulder. Well, if you have a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder, this is what we call an inverse or upside down head and shoulders pattern. And these break out traditionally, more often than not, they break out the length of the head to what we call the neckline. And then you move it over to a breakout position. Your price prediction at this point would be $64,300. And that would be good enough to get us above that daily smart trail, flip the bulls back into being in control. We're going to probably not long after that conquer our $65,000 level. And then it's off to the races for brand new highs. Now, that's very optimistic what I just said right there, but we do got to start. As I said, let's just let's get back above 60,000. Let's conquer that daily smart trail and then let's conquer 65,000. You always want to wait for confirmation before you go big on your investments and your trades. But there are a lot of signs that those those events are trickling and coming down the road. Also, I think the macro is leaning, leading on, on that as well, because you obviously Agreed. will see the Fed rate cut here in um, just a few days. Uh, we'll see, of mm -hmm. course, uh, most likely a move maybe before. And I'm kind of curious, do you think we'll see a move before the election on Bitcoin? Or do you think this yes. is a post-election? I think we're also going to see a move before the rate cuts. I, rarely does a bullish event, rate cuts I think are going to be bullish, election. If I'm being very honest with you, Paul, I, I don't know if it matters who wins, yeah. uh, either, either Trump or now. Kamala. I yep. think it's going to be bullish either way, but but you're not going to wait for the actual event for the bullishness. There's a thing in investing called buy the rumor, sell the news. Rarely does the actual event that is considered bullish or bearish, it's rarely the actual trigger point. A lot of mm -hmm. times experienced investors will buy ahead of time. And so that's why I think part of this rally is right now. We're rallying in anticipation of a cut uh, next Wednesday and then wait for a much bigger rally going yep. towards or already being above all-time highs by the time we get an election uh, early in November. All right, so let's take a quick look at Ethereum because you've got uh, Paul Graywall talking about the eToro settlement. 
Uh, so they just conceded ETH, not uh, offered as an investment contract, security in secondary markets, but the SEC, of course, is not explaining why ETH and Bitcoin, are, but no others. But they can't. Mm -hmm. There's no plan. So the likelihood is eventually we'll see a lot of, con I think, most likely uh, some shifts within Congress that will adju adjust to some of this. But of course, ETH out from underneath um, maybe scrutiny right now. If you look at Ethereum right now, everybody's been concerned with the slowness of how mm -hmm. Ethereum has responded. What is your current position on ETH? Yeah, so when it comes to Ethereum, I, I'm not going to try to deny the frustration that ETH holders have. It has been extremely frustrating. The Ethereum ETF was supposed to be the spark, and yet price is pretty dramatically down from the opening yeah. of that Ethereum ETF. That being said, I, I never thought that ETFs were going to be the defining factor of any cryptocurrency that got them. I still think there's massive use case for the cryptocurrency itself going down the road. And, and as I go back into my chart here on Ethereum, it's a very disappointing looking chart. Chart. You know, we're down here that even the <laughs> pump we've had over the last couple of days, it's very insignificant. Um, but this is what I tell people a lot of times. It's opportunity that we're watching for. And I'm not going to show you guys this on every single altcoin chart that we go through because that would just be very repetitive. But I want to show you on Ethereum and then keep in mind that pretty much every altcoin or every major altcoin out there has a very similar dynamic going on. Uh, there's this there's this concept when you're ranging and you're trading sideways about what's called a low volume spring and all coins are doing that right now. What I mean by that is take a look at every single time that Ethereum after hitting this uh, bull market high back in March. Every time we see a significant dip and then a bounce back, there's always a, a big volume candle that comes in, like this one back here on March 20th, right here back again on May 24th, uh, of course, right here on August 6th. But this newest one that sent the lowest level that we've seen uh, mm -hmm. since all the way back here in January, there's almost no volume. This, this is a constant strategy by larger investors that want to gain the, the majority of the holding. They confuse the retail investors by they have these short-term dips and then pump the price, but they're printing scary stories on all of these dips and they're printing very bullish stories on all of these highs, ultimately causing retail investors to sell every time we come to the bottom and then they buy up those dips with heavy volume and then they sell every time or they're convincing you to buy every time we hit a top uh, and then they're selling and dumping on you. But ultimately the volume communicates that some retail investors didn't fall for it. Some retail investors are, are making the right moves as well. And as long as yeah. retail is making the right moves, it's not time for the whales and institutions to carry off their buy order. But when there's no volume, when there's no volume, but you're starting to get a bounce and you're at a new low, a lot of times that communicates there wasn't a lot of buying and selling, meaning there's no more retail sellers to shake out and only retail investors still around are hodling hardcore and they're refusing to sell their Ethereum. That oftentimes marks the bottom of these types of moves. And so when I say opportunity, we're seeing this low volume spring. We're seeing a buy signal on the Lux Algo Oscillator, that green reversal, green momentum, bullish divergence, positive money flow. Uh, we're seeing a lot of reasons on Ethereum to say, you know what? Yes, it's been a very disappointing last couple of months. That's been that way for almost most every cryptocurrency out there. But when you see these types of pullbacks and price is extremely over uh, extended to the downside, you got to ask the question, is the is the project itself done? Does nobody have a use case for it? Or is it still amazing fundamentally, in which case these low prices become amazing opportunities? That's how I'm treating Ethereum right now. I'm seeing a lot of signs on the charts of a spring to the upside, and I'm seeing low prices with low uh, volume and low action, which means it's a great opportunity for me to come in and buy the dip while it's still cheap. Yeah, I, well, I think a lot of people are looking at ETH in a couple of ways. One, is this something where I reposition my long-term position maybe into an alternative token? You could look at mm -hmm. anything from Solana. Now SWE is kind of the new favorite, uh, as well as things like Avalanche. So there's many that are looking at this as a comparative, but with ETH, I think the the key there, of course, is just the consistency and also the just the revenue power. Um, I mean, it's had consistent revenue throughout the last year, actually has superseded what Solana has done as well. The, I want, the last thing I'd say about Ethereum, Paul, just so people are aware of it, uh, we could be different this time, right? This market's done a lot of things different, but traditionally, yes. we usually see a Bitcoin pump start the bull market off, followed by an Ethereum pump, and then, then it's followed by their larger by altcoins. altcoins. Yep. Uh, so so I, I also urge people that if, if history repeats itself, we should see Ethereum take off here very, take very off, soon. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting to see if if the if the cycles hold true. I want to take a quick break uh, from a, for a word from our sponsor, and of course that is Polkadot. If you guys are wanting to dive into Polkadot a little deeper, go over to polkadot.com. Uh, a couple of things are happening within the Polkadot ecosystem, as well as obviously we have an NFL season. NFL rivals played into this. You can kind of look at a little bit what's happening over there, and then also the other thing is just the staking opportunity. Uh, so go check out the Nova Wallet. That's a great place to do some polka dot staking and earn some pretty significant rewards as well. We'll leave a link down below for you guys to check out. I want to jump over to something that is happening with Ave. Here's Vitalik Buterin deposited uh, some USDC into Ave after selling off some ETH. When you look at Ave right now, and this is one that has been bo- moving over the last couple of uh, weeks, though it has hit somewhat of a bottom right now. In terms of the chart itself, Tim. Is Ave a buy right now? If you were going in and had never purchased this token before, no. Well, so here's what I'll say: If you're going to hold this for a long time, I, I tell people all the time, having a DCA strategy is very different from trading and, sure. and spe- specifically swing, swing trading. You don't have to day trade to trade. Some people want to buy right now, sell in a couple of weeks, and try to to maximize as many tops and bottoms as possible. If your thought is, I want to hold this coin for the rest of the bull market go ahead. Go ahead and purchase it. But if you're saying, I want to swing trade, Paul, I, I made a video this morning covering the three biggest movers of the top 100 cryptocurrencies. That'd be Phantom, it'd be FET, mm-hmm. and then Ave. And Ave was a coin that we called the investing bros here a couple of weeks ago telling our community, get ready. This one is gonna it's about to take off the charts, look primed and ready. The news, I can't remember what the news was, but there was something that happened that sparked and said, hey, Ave is ready to make a run. Um, that's not necessarily the case right now. Let's let's go take a look at the chart, and I'll show you what I was showing my community here this morning. There's two two formations I'm looking at here out in the daily chart. Both of them are technically negative, although the larger one I'm not necessarily too concerned uh, about it breaking to the downside. But this red line up here, right? So this one has been trailing. We've had several touches now since back in July of 2023. It's a nice resistance trend line in play, and we also have a blue support line in play. That one that we've been, t- you know messing with since back in June of 2023, but as you can see, several touches. These are what we call rising broadening wedges. More often than not, they break to the downside, but I'm going to tell you, I don't think this one breaks the downside, but I do think this blue level gets touched again, and that kind of brings us to the more zoomed in version of what we've seen since this peak back here on May 28th, and that would be what we call a rising wedge pattern, constricting wedge. Rather than broadening Mm -hmm. out, this one's getting tighter and tighter, and these are much more reliable for saying we should break to the downside. Uh, traditionally, what this would suggest is that if you take the opening of this formation and move it over to the last resistance point, you could, in theory, see Ave fall back down towards $95. But let's let's pretend, you know, at the moment, Ave, as I said this morning, I thought it was going to be coming down this morning. It does look like that's happening. Let's pretend we make maybe one more good bounce to the upside. In fact, if I turn on Lux Algo indicators, you'll see a take profit suggested yep. level up here at $169. Well, that changes uh, this breakout prediction. Now, all of a sudden, if that level gets hit, I'm looking for a sell order there and a pullback down to about 104. But either way, this formation is still very bearish. When I pull up the oscillators, unlike the rest of the altcoin space that has been living below the 50 on the RSI, the MACD has been living below the zero, and we're getting buy signals on the daily uh, the daily Luxago chart. In this case, we actually recently have seen more sell orders. We're seeing the, the prices look overextended and ready to make a move back down to the downside. So Ave was rallying while a lot of the rest of the crypto space was falling. Not going to be surprised to see Ave take a little bit of a bath, cool off while crypto goes to the upside. And then eventually Ave will rejoin the crypto space. I don't think it will trade inversely forever. It's just a period of time right now. It's had its nice run. It's a little overextended. People will take profits. The price will cool back down, and you'll have the opportunity to buy the dip here again in the next couple of weeks. The question is, is that closer towards 105 or 95? That's yeah. what I don't know the answer. Uh, dollars, that is. I don't know the answer just yet, so I'm going to continue to watch uh, how this well, one plays out. Yeah, and I think the the scenario playing into Ave, the ecosystem, if you look at just what has happened with many of the Trump tokens, Maybe that has had some influence on you know, it. And don't forget. That was it. You can, that was the yeah. trigger. There's the Trump yeah. news. Yeah, you're right. And, good. That's good. and you also have the access of Ave, which is on Robinhood. So for those mm-hmm. who are maybe Trump fans, 
that's an easy way to, I guess, in a way, uh, theoretically, that you could support it. So I think that that may end up being a surprise, and it could end up uh, continuing its trend. This is one we're it watching could. for it sure. Um, okay, so let's jump over to XRP, because XRP, of course, spiked on this news right here. Grayscale uh, launching its first U.S. XRP trust, paving the way now for a potential ETF, which is something we've been anticipating for quite some time, is that maybe XRP is the real next ETF. Granted, who mm -hmm. knows if that's going to have any effect whatsoever on these markets, but uh, it has had an effect on XRP as far as the token, even though it's a small effect. What do you like or don't like about XRP right now? Yeah, X, XRP, is, it's a hard one to kind of read on. I, I'll tell you this, before I say what I'm going to say on the charts, which it's not going to be bearish. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it's terrible, but it's, it's in a place where it's not necessarily striking the confidence we want to see. I have told my community, because there's, there's a split right now, Paul, on XRP. I don't know about your community as well, but there's, you're going to have some people that still just love it. It's got a very strong, thriving community still, but I, I don't feel like there's anyone that's neutral on XRP. I feel like you either <laughs> love it and think it's going to the moon I'm or you neutral. hate it. And I feel you like be I am. <laughs> You're new. Okay. You know, well, I feel like I am too. So maybe you and I are the only two people on the planet uh, that feel the way. I've told my community XRP is going to pop. Is yeah. XRP going to go to $30 or $40? I, I highly doubt it. But will it make it back over a dollar? Yes, it will. Will it probably rival and get closer towards its former all-time high, if not get a little over it? I think it will. I still hold XRP in my portfolio because I think that XRP has the potential to experience a month or two where it is one of the top moving cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. based off yeah. of hype. That being said, I don't know if it's my favorite long-term hold. I more than likely will take heavy profit whatever first initial massive pump we get on XRP that's when I'm looking to probably take profit and move. It's not that I don't think XRP will keep going up. It's that I think other projects will have better returns, and therefore well, sure. I'm going to take my profit on XRP and move it into something else. But on the charts, I want to show you guys. I told you I kind of leaned in here and said I'm going to disappoint you a little bit. We had a very good run this morning, Paul. But but take a look at the top of this wick and, and what it ran into. It's the smart trail. This is the yeah. Lux Algo indicator I use very heavily to determine who's in control. Are the bears in control or are the bulls in control? If we have a red smart trail and it's sitting above us, technically speaking, that is a very significant resistance level that controls where the bears the final line is. And you can see this current red smart trail, we've already rejected on several times, right? So we got to get above that level to regain bullishness. When we do get above it and we have a blue cloud, that does mark the bulls are in control. But you can see even more recently, every time we flip it back to being bullish, it's not very long before the bears take over control once again. So I'd like to see the blue smart trail come back into play and I'd like to see it sustain it. But until you break above this level around 60 cents, it still has resistance. The other thing I'm looking yeah. at right here, not even looking at Lux Algo, uh, Paul, I don't know if I was on your channel for this or not, but but there was a huge, the huge run-up that happened back here. Uh, we'll see, not back there, way back here, a year ago, July 2023, I was one of the crazy, I don't, I'm not going to say I was the only one, but I feel like I was one of the very few that talked about this pullback to 56 cents. When we were up pushing towards the dollar, I told the community, Guys, this is not going to get left untapped. We'd re we'd been rejected at this level for so long, we're not going to not come back and touch the support. Well, it turns out I wasn't bearish enough because we would drop back down below it and use it as resistance, come back, use it as support, resistance, resistance, support, resistance. At the end of the day, 56 cents is extremely important level for XRP, and that's where we're hovering right now. Mm -hmm. So it's not only about getting above the daily smart trail. I think you take Luxago out of it and just say, let's just use traditional markets and talk about 56 cents in general. This has been a very key defining price movement for XRP, whether you're right. on top of it or whether you're below it. We need to get above XRP community. We need to get above 56 cents. We need to start pushing back to 60. We need to get above this long term trend line. Look at this, how long this trend line goes back, Paul, all the way back yeah. to the April 2021 highs. Let's break out of this smart, uh, this, it's smart. Let's break out of this symmetrical triangle pattern. And, and this is where I'm saying, I believe when we talk about going back towards all time highs, I believe that this is a doable thing right here, Paul. I believe that this could send the price of XRP up to $5.66. Not guaranteeing it, but I think that's a distinct possibility simply based off this long-term formation. 
Yeah. But let's beat 56, then let's beat 60, let's get above that red line, and then then we can talk about where XRP actually ends up topping out. But for now, got a lot of battles still to fight on the lower time frames. Well, yeah, and I think the key, you know, I, I'm interesting you were using Luxago on this. I put the signals in overlay on top of our MSI, which is currently read negative, reading negative mm. on sentiment. So I'm, I'm kind of with you. It's almost lined up perfectly uh, yeah. for what you're talking there in terms of the signals and the overlay on, on that indicator with Luxalgo uh, in the sense that we may see a retracement here. But remember, there are a couple things happening with XRP related, and that, of course, is going to be Swell, which is their big event here in Miami. I'm going to try to make it to that event. There's supposed to be some fairly significant announcements, so that's still okay. several weeks away, so that may give us a run-up on XRP going into Swell or at least post, pending on how much news, yeah, on what we hear from um, the Ripple team in terms of, I think, the stablecoin, which is going to be a big, a big one. Hey, speaking of that, I want to get into another big chain out there, and that is SUI, or SUI, whichever <laughs> one you want to call it. Here's uh, one of the tweets right here. Grayscale officially launches a SUI trust for credit investors. So this is going to be another one. Uh, obviously, we saw SUI move up the chart here today, about almost 12, mm -hmm. 15%. Uh, I think it had 12% on, on the early trading. And uh, then you also have some other things happening here with, uh, with SUI. And that, of course, has been their handheld. We've been doing this and shown this uh, gaming device for quite some time. This could be one of those chains that has a very unique framework. One, very low fees. Two, innovation mm -hmm. and possibly the gaming sector. And the potential for an investment you know, within some of the major uh, categories out there. If you look at, at SUI right now, do you like this as an investment where it is today? Yeah, I do. And, and there's going to be some people out there that talk about, I think in the next 18 days, we get another unlock. But these yeah. unlocks that's happening on SUI, people hear the word unlock and they, they run for the hills. They think so. Right? They think yeah. that something terrible is going to happen. I think I saw that this next unlock is going to be like 2% of the total supply. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we're, there's going to be – some people look at the tokenomics on SUI and think, oh, man, it's just – the supply is so low compared to what the total supply is. You can't trust that they're not just going to dump a lot of SUI on you. Well, that's why it's very important to go in and read white papers, read the roadmaps on where these teams are wanting to, to go. And you'll see – I was actually talking with one of my researchers this morning about it because I was curious about like, hey, we're going we're to talk about SUI today in our live show. And I said, when is the next unlock? How significant is it? What's the supply exchange looking like? And, and he found a, a note that said that 52% of SUI is not even going to be unlocked until after 2030. So that's going to comfort a lot of people. Anyone out there worried that there's going to mm -hmm. be a massive su supply dump uh, on the tokenomics and that's going to ruin the price, I'm not so certain. I think SUI is a yeah. good hold, a good coin to have this market. Let's take a look at my chart and show you a couple levels that I'm watching. I'm going to be a little more brief here. We're not getting all the details. I don't even think I need Lux Algo for this. What I've been tracking is a longer-term falling channel. And then yeah. here more recently, let me get rid of – I can draw this back later. I don't really need it right now. We've been in a falling channel in the smaller time frames right here. And there's two ways I'm going to take a look at this, Paul. I'm going to give you a conservative price prediction. You guys can see them up there already, but I'm going to show you how I get there. I'm going to give you the conservative <laughs> prediction of 138. And I'm going to give okay. you a more aggressive prediction of 183. Uh, okay. Conservatively, these falling channels break to the upside. And you take the opening of the channel. You move it over. I think I did that. Let me see. Let me get to this, this one down here. It's actually to this one because it doesn't open until down here. You move it over to the breakout potential of that channel. That right there is going to give us the price prediction of 138, 137, you know, give or take, uh, for our price prediction. It's going to match a peak we had back here on April 20th uh, of this year. That's the conservative estimate for where we could go. But you'll mm -hmm. notice before getting into this channel, there's pretty much – just a couple of days of major explosive price action. This could be perceived by some as being what we call a flagpole, uh, a big flagpole attached to a bull flag. This one, you move over to the last level of support. And when you put it there, this is what gives us a more aggressive price prediction up here towards 182, 183. Uh, not certain which one's going to necessarily for sure happen. Um, this, of course, gets us back up to levels we haven't seen since here on April 8th. Uh, but either way, there's a lot of room to the upside for traders. 
I am, I'm a fan, Paul, of the conservative trade, and then maybe you hold a little bit for the more aggressive yeah. one. I'm telling my community, look for the 137, 138. That, to me, is, is borderline a guarantee. It's going to be interesting to see, though, uh, can we in the next couple of weeks, days even, uh, make a move all the way to 183? It's definitely possible, but the 138, 137 mark, that, to me, seems like almost a sure thing at this point. Traders should take advantage of it. I want to jump mm-hmm. over, lastly, to Avalanche. Avalanche is getting ready to do their big event in Argentina. Uh, There is word on the street that they're going to be doing some major announcements at that event. We could see a big move with Avalanche. So there is some opportunities here within, whether it's on the gaming side, within possibly real world assets. We may even see some things around the platforms that are utilizing them for um, things like uh, brand, you know, loyalty, et cetera, kind of the Mm -hmm. real world asset use case. How do you, do you like Avalanche where it's trading right now? If you have not ever invested in this token, is this a point where you could go into it? Yeah, I, I like AVAX here as well. I'm bullish on it long term. Um, very bullish on it long term. This is still right now. I think Chainlink's going to surpass it in market cap. But when you look at real world asset projects, something that I think is going to be one of the defining bullish factors in the bull market, uh, AVAX is still currently the number one ranked real world asset cryptocurrency by market cap. Uh, I wouldn't. I would not sleep on that if I were you. On on a shorter time frame, though, there's some interesting things that I'm watching here on the charts. I'll show you guys what I'm seeing. Falling wedge pattern, very similar to a lot of the rest of the crypto space. You're gonna see a lot of coins right now, uh, with the exception of I think we were looking earlier in Ave. It, it wasn't in a falling wedge. It was in a rising wedge. But most crypto right now is in a falling wedge, falling channel. This breakout prediction would send us up to about thirty seven dollars thirty four cents, give or take, Ooh. back up to a level of resistance yeah. that we haven't seen since May. That's a big move. Uh, but then you get even deeper here with Lux Algo, and, and you see some other very interesting stuff, maybe a little bit below that. But uh, we're about to break out here. We got a buy signal here on Lux Algo that kind of says $30 is almost a guarantee at this point with the rising smart trail and the take profit level sitting right there. Um, but could we make it to that top level, go up a little above and, and answer this other question? I think so. We did get the nice daily buy signal here just a couple of days ago um, that you're seeing a little curve over at the moment. I mean, this, I, I don't love going to four hour charts all the time for these types of shows. This is more for my traders. But if you go to the lower time frames because you saw that curve on the daily chart, mm-hmm. we're hitting support on these lower time frames. Yes, there's a sell order, but we're bouncing off that smart trail. I'm staying bullish here, Paul. I think that that red line of the falling wedge pattern is about to break. I think watch for a 30 to $40 range very, very soon, probably the next couple of weeks. Again, get that rate cut next week. Watch yep. out. Uh, it's not that it's not going to be alt season either. It's just going to be Bitcoin's going to go nuts. Alts are going to go nuts. And then the real fireworks coming later this year around December, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I think one of the big things here is they've got uh, official mainnet launching on Friday, the 18th. So every night, let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys. Remember, yeah. October 18th, this is very close to their event as well. But Pulsar has pretty much kind of dominated their transaction numbers, but the launch of their mainnet is going to be a big news. This may be good news or bad news. I don't know which. If uh, it, will the will the network be able to handle it? So, uh, <laughs> if it does handle it, then uh, we could see some fireworks definitely in October for Avalanche. Just as a reminder, everybody, uh, Singapore br- uh, Breakpoint is happening. Obviously, Token uh, Twenty Forty Nine. All of this happening coming up on the 20th through the 21st. And there's a lot of things happening there that eventually, officially have been announced. Fire Dancer, they're just, they use the word Fire Dancer period, which I think mm-hmm. is interesting. Uh, and then the, I like the uh, Solana Network. See, I wonder if Balaji is going to be involved in that. Um, and then a Solana 2.0. So a lot of key keynotes and uh, builders at Jupiter Exchange, who I think is going to be important uh, for Solana's future. If you're trading Solana right now, is this one that you'd stick around on? Because, I mean, you're setting in, what are we at uh, trading right now? Let's go 134, 135. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is one, Paul, that I'm looking for a long. I'm actually in a long with our community up to about uh, a little bit below 160. Uh, mm. I can show you guys here if I go to my screen what I'm looking at here, just like the rest of the altcoin space. I feel like I feel like I'm a broken record, but it, it, it's what you guys need to know about. The, the daily chart oscillators are going bullish. RSI is about to cross 50. Bullish MACD, the buy signal on Lux Alga with that green reversal, green momentum, positive money flow. And again, that strategy that I use there, especially on the Lux Alga oscillator, 
90% of the time, the price at least bounces and rejects on the smart trail. Well, where's that smart yeah, trail at the moment? You. Right around 150. Low end? Yep. 153 high end 160. So that's it's it seems simple and people want to make people want to make trading a lot more complicated than it has to be, Paul. I'm not saying you'll win 100% of the times, but if you have good systems, if you have good strategies and you just go with it and you win 60, 70, 80% of the time and you know how to do your correct uh risk to reward ratios, it's a lot of money making trading and it really can be very simple if you allow it to be. I got a question for you. Well, there's a big order block in that range too. Uh, right now. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a factor that plays into it, but it's hovering in an order block. That's pretty been, has been pretty consistent over time. Even if you run back about a dozen order blocks, you can kind of see that overlap occurring right there on my chart, but I'm kind of curious, Tim, would you, okay, you got, you know, you only have so many tokens you can jump into. Would you jump into Solana or would you jump into Sui right now? For a trader, somebody that's saying, Hey, this is my first time in crypto. I'm getting ready to buy my altcoin. Everybody's been talking about Solana. But the, what's this suey thing? You know, would yeah. you say, all right, I want to hold this through the run? What would you jump into? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think there's a the I fact think the that you say that's a good question. That that shows me pause. I like that in the sense well, that maybe suey could be a play here. So so Solana's your safer pick. It's it's the yeah. higher market cap. It's got way more users. It's been around the block uh, at this point. I don't know if a year ago we're saying that Solana is tried and true and trusted. I think we are mm-hmm. now. I think Solana joined the big three. Okay. I think I think when you think of cryptocurrency, you don't just think of Bitcoin and Ethereum anymore and, and Dogecoin. I mean, everyone thinks of the meme coins. But I'm saying if you're legitimately into crypto, the first three cryptos that should come to your mind are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. I, I think mm-hmm. they're the big three. I think they've separated themselves from the pack. But you know what comes with that, Paul, when you're that good at what you do? it comes with minimal returns, right? Yes. So in the trade setups I just gave people, if Solana made its way up towards 160 from where it currently is, that's a 17% rally. Now in trading, right. I can throw a 10X, 20X, 30X. I try not to get crazy with it, but it's only a 17% rally if I'm spot trading. The SUI conservative trade that I made, right? So I'm not even going after my more aggressive one. The conservative SUI trade is 35%. Right. So there's greater returns on SUI. SUI is newer. It has higher upside. So it really comes down to, when I say it's a good question, I think I'm going to give a different answer depending on who I'm talking to. If yeah. I'm talking to a wealthier individual who's less risk-friendly and wants to protect their wealth, I'm going Solana. But if you want to make more money, maybe your account isn't anywhere close to where you want it to be. You want to be a little more aggressive. You have a higher mm-hmm. risk tolerance. I think SUI has the higher potential, the, the uh, especially – even in the short term, but I think even more so in the long term. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, it's always fun having you on the channel, Tim. I like to get your perspective on a lot of these tokens, especially from an angle of how the charts lay out. So we'll definitely get you mm-hmm. back. Uh, and it's good to chat with you. Thank you uh, for stopping in. As a reminder for all of you guys watching right now, make sure and jump over to Investing Bros. Uh, they have now hit 30K on the subscribe and you're over a thousand videos. So you guys are cranking out the content. So we I can't are. wait. And, and uh, it's going to be uh, good to watch you guys uh, continue to climb over there. So everybody, check out Tim over on Investing Bros. Help him out there. Hey, it was good seeing you, and uh, we'll catch you next time, okay? Awesome. Thanks for having me, Paul. You bet. All right, if you guys are tuned in uh, on the podcast side of things, or if you're here on the YouTube channel, make sure and jump into the Diamond Circle. It is our own private member group. We do additional market updates. I do a lot of videos over there and podcasts that we don't put here on the YouTube channel. So Make sure and just jump over there. You can leave or hit the link down below. It's very easy to do. And of course, follow me on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.